Hey guys, hello. Let's go over uh, the second um, uh, portion of this lecture series, the phylum Cnidarian or Solenterata. So all of the organism, if they discover an organism today, it's like jellyfish or not like jellyfish, and it has cnidocytes, they put them in this phylum. So the main criteria of being a member of this phylum is having cnidocytes. C is silent, okay? C is silent. So it's called, you have to spell it. You have to spell it, but uh, it's called cnidocyte, the name of the cells. And then mostly marine and a few freshwater one and a hydroids, anytime you hear hydroids for these uh, le few lectures or this lecture, it means they are stationary. They're polyp stage or hydroid. Another name for polyp stage is hydroid. Sea anemones, jellyfish, horny corals, they all belong to this phylum. Okay, the first class of cnidarian is class hydrozoa, uh, scyphozoa. These are the four classes, tubozoa, anthozoa, and some cnidarians are freshwater. They have medusa as a, uh, uh, crass pedicure. How about that? Uh, I don't say it every semester. So, so very, you don't have to worry about them. Uh, these are, uh, again, uh, crass pediculasta, uh, medusae. These are, I'm not uh, too crazy about them. But as long as you know, there are they, a few species can be found in fresh water. And the fresh water means. Uh, they are the study of freshwater is called limnology. Okay, my God, wow, limnology. Okay, limnology it means species of um, study of ecology of freshwater um, organisms, opposite of oceanography. So. Uh, fresh water includes ponds, rivers, lakes, anything like that is called fresh water. It's opposite of marine. Marine, it's the ocean water. So um, having said that, okay, so the main characteristics of cnidarian, the polyp or hydroid, as I already mentioned that are sedentary, they do not, they move, uh, they are not sessile, they can move, some of them are sessile, some of them move, but they move very really slowly, okay? That's what I mean by sedentary. Uh, you've heard of, they say an obese person is sedentary. It means they do move, but they move very slowly. Okay, so they have an oral, oral uh, end. Um, so if this is a jellyfish, and I'll show it to you in a hydra, the oral end is on this side, the mouth is on that side. These are the tentacles, my fingers are tentacles. The oral end is that side. The aboral end is that side. So oral, and you said, we, talk, we talked about it, that food goes from here and waste comes out from here also. So there's nothing on the aboral side. Same as a hydroid. Um, the hydroid one, which are stationary, just like my arm sitting on the bottom of the ocean, and these are the tentacles. This is the, uh, this is the oral side, and this end is aboral side of the organism. I hope I'm making some sense. Uh, the, 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 the tubular, look at my arm, look at my hand, like a tube. This is like a tube. Uh, some form colonies, which we will talk about them later. Medusa ones that they move, okay, uh, bell shape or umbrella shape, uh, mouth in the center, and mesoglia is thicker. Compared to the polyp one, the mesoglia layer is thicker. So neither sides contain nematocysts, and I'll show you some pictures and we'll talk about them. The nematocysts, they're like a string and they can penetrate, they can right here penetrate, or they can inject uh, like a glue, they can move, anyhow. This uh, nematocyst, there are three different types of nematocysts. And they have operculum. The nematocyst is inside of the cnidocytes, and there is a flap. That flap is called operculum. So the flap comes open, and the nematocyst ejects out. We'll see. Uh, three types of nematocysts uh, penetrants, uh, which penetrates and injects poison. 
uh, volvents entangle. It can wrap around species and entangle species. And then you have, I was looking for a cord uh, to, I couldn't find it, a cord to entangle it around my hand and say, anyhow, but you know what I mean. And then the, fall, the final one, glutenant, uh, which is um, an adhesive substance for locomotion and for attachment. Let's see what it says. Uh, nerve net, they have neurotransmitters, no myelin at the beginning of semester. I said uh, that the neurons that they do not have myelin, they are uh, primitive. And as animals evolve, the myelin wrapped around the neuron, then the animals became more advanced. And then, of course, the neuromuscular system, which I will talk about that when the pictures come up. Here is quickly the differences between the medusa stage right here and the polyp stage, uh, the polyp stage and the medusa stage. I got them vice versa. This is the medusa stage and this is the polyp stage. So you can see the epidermis mesoglia is thicker compared to here. Mesoglia is thinner. The, um, the red, okay, look at the red is thicker. Okay, this is the gastrovascular cavity. This is the gastrovascular cavity. Gastrodermis is a thin layer of yellow. Okay, I wish it would have dried a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Uh, tentacles here, tentacles here. Uh, the polyp stage, uh, mesoglia is, uh, as I said, thinner. Gastrodermis, epidermis is the blue. Mouth and anus, they both are here. This one is mouth and anus. They did not write down, I'm gonna write down anus, mouth and anus, or mouth and anus. Okay, they're right there. And then tentacles, gastrovascular cavity, and then so on and so forth. So gastrodermis mouth, and that's a, a, a polyp stage. This is a medusa stage. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. The uh, nidocyte right here is a nidocyte. Here's a nucleus of the nidocyte. And here is, they call it nidocell. This sense the environment that there is a, a predator, you better eject it or there is prey. Uh, you better eject it and then bring it to the mouth. So that's nidocell is a structure for sensing the environment and what's going on. Then you have the filament right here. That is the one that penetrate or entangle or uh, glutenin move by that means, okay? There's a flap, I told you, like operculum. See, the operculum is closed on this one right here, but the operculum on this one is open. So the, the filament comes out. And that filament is called, the whole entire structure is called the matocyst. The cell is called nidocyte. I hope I'm making some sense. And these nidocytes are embedded within the epidermis. Well, they do not use the term epidermis. Uh, they use epidermis here. And look at the neuron. They have some nerve right here. And then the epithelial muscular cells right here at the base, they have these muscle fibers. If you look at them, uh, did they mention the mesoglia, gastrovascular cavity? They did not mention circular, my here we go. Yes, circular myofibril, these, all of that right here. So you did not see that in sponges. They do have a muscle layer underneath, but they are not real muscle, just a fiber. They are not muscle cells. I said throughout my talk, they are muscle cells. Please forgive me. I don't think I'd said it, but they are muscle fibers. Of course, our muscle cells are made up of muscle fibers, but in our muscle cells, there is a membrane surround the muscle fibers. You know, actin and myosin from first exam material. So, and then of course, this is the gastrodermis. The uh, right here, they uh, grab food and uh, digest it, break it down. And then what did I say up here? 
Oh, interstitial cells, important that you should know a few things about interstitial cells, undifferentiated cells like stem cell. We talked about stem cells uh, last exam material uh, that can develop into cnidoblast, sex cells, buds or nerve cells, but not epithelial muscular cells. That's what interstitial cells are. Gland cells, which you're seeing them right here, Gland cells, uh, they, uh, uh, they secrete the adhesive substances and sometimes a gas bubble for floating. And that's what those are the gland cells are pretty much. Okay, so interstitial cells, uh, very important. Uh, you should know that they are like stem cells and they can differentiate different types of cells, which I mentioned right there. Okay, I hope I mentioned everything. The first class is class hydrozoa. So like hydra, we have in the lab, obelia, we have in the lab, hydra, we have in the lab, goinemus, we have in the lab, physelia is a colonial anim animal. Uh, we have in the lab, and obelia is colonial also. Hydra is just uh, by itself. It's a freshwater organism. Hydra is a freshwater organism. And the rest are marine. So some have medusa, polyp, or both, uh, colonial, uh, mostly marine, but freshwater hydra. Yes, velum is a membrane on the subumbrella surface of the jellyfish of class hydrozoa, uh, colonial colony. And possibly some scientists say because of this, this velum, the member of class hydrozoa, cannot grow to become as huge as jellyfishes you have seen in YouTube or textbook or other places, books and uh, other uh, places you have seen. So this diagram is showing you the hydra, um, the tentacles, we already talked about that. The name of the organism is hydra. And then the nidocyte, I mentioned that the filament and then uh, night, um, the um, nematocyst, all of this is nematocyst, I already talked about it. And then um, there's, I guess, there's nothing more to say. We already talked about that. So <laughs> Louis Pasteur says, chance favors the prepared mind. So if your mind is prepared and then chance comes, a lot of discoveries in sciences uh, were made by just chance they were looking for something else, completely something else, and they found something else, something earth shaking. Okay, uh, an example of that would be the Nutrasweet. An example of that would be the discovery of penicillin. Uh, so these are some of the things they were looking. The scientists were looking for something else, and they found um, great things. Hydra, uh, Hydra is freshwater hydra. Mouth opens to gastrovascular cavity. They uh, reproduce by budding. So this is hydra. A new one grows from side of the animals and separates from other hydra and sits on the bottom of the lake. Okay, that's what budding means. And we do have side of it in the lab. They, even though they go through asexual reproductions, budding is an asexual reproduction, they do have testes and ovaries for sexual reproduction. And we talked about advantages of sexual reproductions in the first exam. Epidermis, gastrodermis, and mesoglia, interstitial cells. As I said, they are like stem cells. They grow to different types of cells. Make sure you know what they are. Holoblastic cleavage to form a hollow blastula. So these guys, they have two gem layers. They can have blastula and so on and so forth. Coenemis, um, we do have it in the lab. Marine uh, hydromedusa or hydrozoan jellyfish. And medusa is mature. Gonads attached to the radial canal. External fertilization, I already talked about external fertilization a little bit. And polyp stage might undergo asexual reductions by budding or may form uh, medusa. Here is a picture that is in your textbook. These are the tentacles. They have velum. Remember that it does not allow the animal to become large, possibly. That's what scientists say. Uh, all of these structures and everything else, do not worry about it too much. Just as long as you know, going in as as velum, goenemus, uh, yeah, it belongs to class hydrozoa. Okay. Obelia, we ha I have more to say about obelia uh, because we do have microscopic slides of them in the lab. Let's talk about the life cycle of it. 
uh, Obelia has a nice typical life cycle of Cnidarian. A typical nice life cycle of uh, most Cnidarian is like this. Okay. So colonial marine hydrozoan, sexual stage is free living of Medusa. Yes, Medusa is similar to Guanemus, but smaller and right here. Great. Okay. So if you look at it, look like a tree. Look like actually uh, for a long time they thought hydra is a plant, but it's not a plant, it's an animal. Okay, so this look like a uh, plant, but it's not a plant, it's an animal. And these are different colonies. This is the gastrovascular colony, the colony that eats food. These are the um, gonangium colony, they are reproductive colonies. Okay. So this entire colony, another name for it is uh, hydranth, okay? The main stem in here is called hydrocallus, right here, this main stem is called hydrocallus. And the blue inside where food material percolate is called sinusarc. And outside of the white area, you guys can see the white right here, the white, not the blue, is uh, made up of chitin material. I talked about at the beginning, introduction to this section. Uh, it's chitinous material, and that is called perisol. It's just like an exoskeleton. It's not exoskeleton. It's not bad, bad definition of exoskeleton. It's just a wood is outside of the animal structure here. Then what happens, the reproductive, these uh, with tentacles, they grab food, bring it to the mouth, and then they digest it, and uh, the food percolates through the animal, and so on and so forth. And the waste material get out through here. The waste material get out through there, okay? Then what happens, the reproductive uh, colony, if you would, this is feeding colony, right here, hydrant is feeding colony. The reproductive colony, they have these little medusa buds, they get out and the medusa buds get out and they mature, they become bigger and they release sperm and egg, fertilization is outside. So the fertilized they called zygote, then two cells, four cells, a blastula, you remember that? Blastula then becomes a planula larva. Look at the cilia outside of it. It's a multicellular structure. It's not like cilia, uh, permesium, which is one cell. Then the planula find a piece of a rock on the bottom of the uh, ocean, sits on it, and grow. When they grow, then uh, Hydrorhiza is a structure on the bottom, do not worry about that. But they, when they grow, then they grow the reproductive colonies, they grow the feeding colonies, reproductive colonies, and so on and so forth. That is a typical life cycle of um, Cnidarians. Okay, a lot of Cnidarians look like this. They have a life cycle like this. They have a Medusa stage, which they float around in the ocean, and they have a polyp stage, like a tree that I'm showing you. This is a, a polyp. Of course, this is a colony. Remember, this is a colonial stage. Mycelia, the common name for it is Portuguese man of war, and then uh, polymorphism. Uh, they have, a, it's a colonial look like a single animal, but it's not, but it's made of a feeding colony, which is called gastrozoid. Uh, they have a reproductive colony, which is called gonozoid. And they have defense colony is called dactylo. Zoid. Okay, dactylozoid, um, um, gonozoid, and gastrozoids. Okay, so final uh, find uh, a float and crest in these animals. 
So this whole entire thing right here is the float. And right here, you see those lines, that is the crest. And of course, these are all tentacles. So those are the structures I would like you to find in the animal. A single colony has both polyp and uh, medusa stage. What are the five differences between hydra and the rest of uh, hydrozoa? I would like you to come up with the answer. I gave you already a few of them. Uh, they're in fresh water, the rest of hydrozoa is in marine. Uh, they are solitary just by themselves, both uh, testes and ovaries in one organism and so on and so on. Next class. These are the class, these, the members of this class, they become huge, gigantic jellyfish. Okay, so most likely whenever you're on a book or when you go to an aquarium, you see a huge jellyfish, it belongs to class Kyphozoa, not Hydrozoa. All marine, uh, Arulia is the one we have in the lab. So we study it in the lab and of course in here a little bit. Uh, most of large jellyfish, polyp absent or reduced. So the polyp, you will see it in case of um, uh, Arulia is part of, the, part of the life cycle. One order is completely set aside. You remember kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, species, so on and so forth, family, I forgot that, anyhow. Uh, family, uh, genus, order, uh, family, genus, species. Uh, one order is SI, no velum. That's why scientists think they have no velum so they can grow. Uh, sexes are separate. Gametes release to gastrovascular cavity. Fertilization is internal. And then ciliated uh, planula, this is the life cycle, becomes skyphostoma, strobula, ephyra. We do have this, all of this in the lab, except this one. We do not have that one. We do have planula uh, and medusa and ephyra. We have all of those in the lab. Uh, zygote on the oral arms of medusa or in the seawater. So arulia, in the arulia uh, we have in the lab, these are the structures I would like you to locate. Uh, oral arms, they have four of them. And oral tentacles, so that's two structures. Quarter mouth, you should be able to find that. Gonads and stomach. They, they're different, but it's very difficult for you guys to identify which one is going at, which one is um, stomach. So stomachs are inside of going at. Uh, radial canal, uh, you see it, it's on the surface of the animal, very easy. Marginal tentacle, very nice and easy. Okay, so this is the life cycle of uh, Arulia. So here, let's start, it's a, it's a cycle, it doesn't matter where it starts. It's a planular larva, ciliated, multicellular, sperm and egg are fertilized, in, the fertilization is internal in case of Arolia. So the ciliated larva goes find a piece of rock right here and it starts growing. So uh, we do, um, no, we do not have scypostoma in the lab, but we have strobula stage. And usually you can see about 10 to 12 jellyfish in here. Just a number, 10 to 12, not hundreds. If you would have asked me, I mean, how many? Uh, they are not, uh, not hundreds, okay? So 10 to 12 jellyfish in here. And they separate like a um, stack of ashtrays in old days, I don't know if you've seen them or not. So they do separate and each one of them is immature jellyfish called a fire up. A fire up becomes mature jellyfish. These are marginal tentacles. These are oral arms, mouth, and the gonad and stomach are right here. Okay, so the gonad um, and the stomach are right there. And then fertilization, uh, sperm release the uh, sperm crawls up the arms of the female, um, and then uh, fertilize the egg somewhere in here. And then after that, they release the planet. I hope I made some sense. So that's it. And then we have all of them in the lab. Every stage of this life cycle, we have them in the lab, except Skyphostoma. Okay, cube jellyfish, 
their sea wasps, we do not have any specimen of this in the lab. We do not have any tube jelly in the lab. Uh, common name for a sea wasp, uh, stinging, dangerous to human. And then the polyp is small and no ephyra uh, metamorphosis directly to uh, uh, Medusa, I forgot the S in there. And uh, Crypnia marsupialis is the name of the species I'm giving you. So you should know the name of at least one species from this class. Right here, look like a cube jelly. Uh, that's all I want you to know. There is nothing else. Um, valerium, they do have valerium equivalent to velum. And um, that's why I want you to also, I want you to know valerium. And maybe again, this is a structure that cube jellies cannot become huge. I think gigantic as big as Scyphostoma. Here are some pictures uh, over the years I got from students. They can sting uh, human. And then here is a cube jelly, and here is a baby has been slashed, not by cube jelly. If it was cube jelly, it would, it would not be like this, it should not be standing. Uh, just other jellyfishes. And what happened with uh, cube jelly, they can uh, sting and they can kill people. Um, uh, again, it depends who studies what. Uh, if I study cube jelly, I say, yes, this thing of the cube jellies are the most, ven this most venomous animal on planet Earth. Um, but anyhow, um, it depends uh, who is saying what. And here is a cube jelly is eating a crayfish. Uh, there is a fight, I guess, between the sea turtle and cube jelly. I'm not sure who's going to win that fight, but I think that uh, not cube jelly, that jellyfish is being meal of a um, sea turtle. That's what my uh, prediction is. Uh, class Anthozoa, uh, the common name is flower animals. They're all marine and longitudinal fission and pedal lacerations. So if you have a, um, and they look like, as I said, they are tube-like and um, the class Anthozoa. And what happens, they divide themselves in half so one half grows and become a complete uh, medusa stage and uh, polyp stage, sorry about that. Becomes a polyp stage and the other half grows, uh, becomes a polyp stage. Or they are sitting on the bottom of the ocean, my hand is bottom of the ocean, and they're like this. They separate themselves from the pedal one. That's what they call it, pedal laceration. They cut themselves from pedal one and this one complete itself and become another uh, sea anemones. And this one, this petal one, becomes a sea anemones also. They both are asexual reproduction. So longitudinal fission or petal laceration. Uh, metridium is the name of the specimens we have in the lab. Um, that's a sea anemones. And they call them flower animals. I forgot to mention that, sorry about that because the tentacles and the body of the animals are some gorgeous looking. I've seen some bright yellow, orange color, purple. They're just gorgeous looking uh, metallic. You guys use the term metallic. This new generation uses the term metallic. Uh, so they are these nice metallic, gorgeous, bright colors. That's what they call them, flower animals. Not a good thing, easy meals for other animals. So not a good evolutionary wise, they have not evolved uh, to get rid of that. But um, anyhow, the ones we have in the lab, they are gray, they are um, brownish color. Pharynx or gullet, which is down here, I'll show you some pictures. Tube anemones and thorny corals, we, well, we'll talk about them, the thorny corals. Uh, Gastrovascular cavity has septa, they have six of them, six complete septum. Uh, septum is singular, septa is plural. And then mesoglia has amoeboid cells right here. So let's go over the first thing that I don't forget. This is a complete septum. It goes all the way from uh, the uh, pharynx to epidermis. And these other things, these are all secondary or incomplete septum. If you look at it, one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six complete septa, okay? 
And then, of course, these are the tentacles that I was talking about. It makes the animal so beautiful, so gorgeous looking. And this is the pharynx or gullet, which we talked about that. And then uh, right here, the food is being absorbed through here and the waste product comes out of here. So, um, and then of course, inside right here, they have your nematocysts, all of the structures are right here. And then the, uh, you might heard the corals, what happens, some of the sea anemones, animals like this, over the years, they start making a calcium carbonate deposits, which I'm drawing in here outside of themselves, okay? And after a few decades, years, this animal dies. What is left, these calcium carbonate that they made a shell out of for themselves as a shell, they will remain. And that's why you are seeing the corals. Um, and uh, the uh, coral reef, these are some of the uh, expressions you've heard in your life. Animals in this class make them. Amphozoa, class Amphozoa. Here they are explaining it. So uh, I'm not going to go over anymore. So they release all of these structures. And after a while, the soft portion of the animal stays, but these calcium carbonate stays for millions of years. Here is an example of a coral. Of course, the animal that made this is gone, gone, long time ago, gone. Um, but they're different corals. Okay, the next phylum is phylum tenophora. You guys, uh, they do not have the nematocyst. You remember at the beginning of Nidarian, uh, uh, I said they have to have nematocysts in order to be in this phylum. These guys do not have nematocysts. So uh, pleurobrachia is the name of the organism that we do have in the lab that I'm giving it to you. Your textbook uh, gave you two species, but this is the one we have in the lab, pleurobrachia. Uh, it's a comb jelly. So they call it comb jelly because of these lines. You guys can see that look like a comb. And they flash just like a, a firefly. They can they are bioilluminant species, okay? So, uh, tenophores resemble the cnidarians because they are radial symmetry animal, of course. They are at oral, oral axis, of course. Well-developed mesoglia, uh, you all know about this, no silomic cavity, and they have nerve fluxes. These are the reasons they are similar to cnidarians. Okay. And then lack of organ system and everything else. Have eight rows of combs, I forgot to say, they are eight combs of rowing, uh, of cilia used for locomotion. Okay, uh, phylum tenophora again, what, what is it? Why they have their own phylum? Why they didn't put them with nigerians? Well, here they are. Because they do not have nematocysts. Okay, they have distinct muscle cells talk about that, I emphasize on that. You remember that when I was talking about um, cnidarians. And then they have complete, something cnidarians do not have. They have no polymorphism or dimorphism. That's what I mean, polyp stage and medusa stage. They do not have that. They are not colonies, polymorphism, like um, uh, Portuguese, man of, uh, Portuguese man of war, the uh, Phycelia. They do not have that, okay? And they're never cronial. And then they have anal pore. They have, on the aboral end, they do have a little opening called anal pore. They're just oral, aboral. And they have little opening on the aboral end. And that should end of the material for, um, this chapter and I'll stop and I will uh, talk about flatworms next. <laughs>